All right, so we have our Sachi Hoko here, and we want to make it look like it's all one object. So you're probably starting off in object mode. You want to switch over to sculpt mode. And in sculpt mode, it's what we're going to do is going to work very similar to what we would have done in sculpt GL. However, we do have a bit more that we can play with. We have a bit more customization, actually a lot more customization in Blender. And there's a couple things we need to make note of. Now, in this model, I am going to keep symmetry on. You want to make sure that the symmetry is on, though, so it's working on either side of the left and right. You do not want symmetry to be on front and back for this because that is going to completely mess stuff off. You can also turn symmetry off by deselecting, or you can switch it to a different axis by selecting the new axis. But I'm going to leave it in symmetry X because that's the way that works for me. If yours is running along the green line, you'll probably want to switch it to symmetry Y. The other thing that we want to do when we're working on this is we want to turn on something called die and topo. Now what die and topo does is it is going to give you a warning saying that it doesn't preserve stuff that's okay, because what die and topo does is it actually adds new vertices in. So what that means is it's adding new structures, so the shape is going to look much more, it's going to look much smoother and much more realistic. So if we add stuff in with die and topo, it's not trying to rearrange what's already there. It's actually adding in new pieces of data. All of this can be found in the tool panel, which is at the very top, well, about the middle of your right-hand side, top of this big panel of selecting that we have here. And the tool we're going to want to use for now is pretty much exclusively going to be smooth. Yeah. So. With die and topo on, right now it's going to default to something called relative detail. That means it's going to give more detail to stuff if you zoom in close. So just keep that in mind. You can actually get different degrees of shapes depending on how far you're zoomed out. For me, I mostly will work on this fairly close in because I want to get the details and I want to make sure that stuff doesn't mess up too much. And actually that's giving me something funky. And it's giving me something funky because symmetry is on, so I'm actually going to turn the symmetry off. It's not interacting well with each other. So I'm going to have to go through this entire thing on both sides. Other important thing when you're working in sculpt mode is you can press F and then scroll your cursor to rearrange the size of your brush. This is really helpful if you get into a tricky spot. You can make your brush bigger or smaller just with a quick click. And all we're going to do along here is we're just trying to make it so that it looks like these two models are not just two things we've kit bashed together. We want to make it look like they actually belong together. Sometimes you might have things happen that you don't like, like I did right there. It's okay to undo. It is okay to make mistakes when you're doing this. And all we're trying to do is we're just trying to bring this over so that everything looks like it developed together naturally. And this is actually my second time making this video because the first time it didn't record, it was quite nice the first time. So I'm a little bit annoyed at it, but that's okay. We can make this work. It is okay to have stuff mess up on you. And it's okay to make mistakes. This is a learning process. The only way you get better at sculpting and 3D printing is by doing so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to flatten this out. And it's not particularly cooperating with me. You might be able to hear I'm getting a little bit annoyed at it. So if you find yourself getting frustrated with these sometimes, 
sometimes it's best just to move on to a different place. So that's what I'm going to do. Just going to restore it to the way it was, and I'm going to go work over here. In the hair of the lion, I am going to do a little bit around the edges, and all I'm doing is I'm just making it blend in a little bit more. The reason I'm doing this is that I want it to look like the hair is actually laying flat over the fish scales. Now, I'm working really close in here because what I really don't want to do is I don't want to lose those fish scales. I want to make sure everything gets preserved. And these ledge parts are actually the hardest part. Um, when you're making your sachihoko, if you can get the ledges as small as possible, it's going to make your life a lot easier later on. Like I'm having to fight with them a little bit right now. That's okay. It happens. And what we're really trying to do is we're just trying to make it look like all of this stuff belongs together. We want it to look like this is not an unholy abomination of 3D printing. We want it to look like, oh, this could actually be a plausible catfish. Not the type that you eat for dinner. And yes, people do eat catfish for dinner. So just like before, those ledges are the hardest part. So just be a little bit persistent with them. If you can get the ledges out in the first place, it does actually make your life a bit easier. So I'm losing a little bit of the hair detail here. But I also want to preserve those gills a bit. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit along here. But that's not bad, actually, because you have the hair coming down and it's folding into the gills fairly naturally. Over the top, it's looking pretty good, too. And realistically, if I'm printing this, I'm probably not going to 3D print this in big scale. And this is definitely not like something we're going to put into an animation. So if you've got some rough patches, it's fine. The 3D printer, oftentimes you'll lose a little bit of those rough details that look a little bit wonky when you run it through the slicer. Ah. And there's a lesson in that as well. This is the part that was bugging me before. And while it's not perfect, it's not exactly the way I want it or I had it the first time I did this video, it's good enough. It's nice enough. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I am going to bring the gills in just a little bit. So I'm clicking the Grab tool. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. That's Elastic Deform. I'm clicking the Grab tool with G. I'm just going to bring this in a little bit. What the Grab does is you can actually use the Grab to move parts of your print without losing those details. So I'm just moving this inwards a little bit. I'm actually going to go... That's wrong. There we go. Um, I'm actually going to flip this the other way around, so I'm looking at the head. I'm just going to move this in. Oh, that's too much. So all I'm doing is I'm just massaging this in a little bit, because it looks to me like this stuff is sticking out a bit too much. So I'm just moving it in to make it look a little bit more organic. Hopefully. And with every, as with everything else, this is really about your preference and your eyeball. So I'm not 100% happy with how this one turned out. I liked the other one better, but it's good enough. So I'm going to leave it at that. Just look for the sharp edges when you're trying to smooth it out. Because if you look at it from the top, which is where most people are going to be looking at this one, it looks like it's one model, and that's all we want. 